started a series last week on prayer. Um, the importance of prayer, as uh, we talked about, we called that uh, <clears throat> um, sermon the Let Us Pray Precisely. And um, the sermon series we've just called Let Us Pray. Um, and really, I, I just feel like um, it's a good time for us to be reminded of the importance of prayer. You know, um, at the center of who we are as children of God is fellowship with the Father. If if we, we're not engaged in fellowship with the Father, which the main part of that is is prayer. Uh, of course, consuming the Word of God is another part of it. We call, you know, um, um, praying and feasting on the Word of God and fasting is the other thing that we've emphasized at that, but it's the bullseye of one of our goals here as members of the Fellowship Church is fellowship with the Father. And so we need to be people of prayer. So we ought to be praying. And like I said, last week we looked at Luke chapter 11 and we looked at the first four verses in the sermon called Let Us Pray Precisely. And in that we looked at what a lot of people call the Lord's Prayer, but the Lord's Prayer is really in... <clears throat> John 17, if you want to read that, when Jesus is praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. But uh, the model prayer is what he gave us. Uh, it wasn't the Lord's Prayer because he said, Father, for, forgive us. And uh, Jesus wouldn't have to say that. He's, he's teaching us how to pray. And that's what the disciples that asked him was teach us to pray. Today we're picking up where we left off in verse 5. So I want you to understand that this is the backdrop to what we're looking at. It's a continuation of what Jesus has just taught his disciples. And uh, he, he shares, really, this is just a lengthy illustration, is all it is. And um, so we're taking a look at that in our message today, starting with verse 5 in Luke 11. We're going to read through verse 13 with a message we're calling, Let Us Pray Confidently. Let Us Pray Confidently. So let's read that text together this morning. After Jesus taught them that model prayer, it says, and he said to them, which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine has come to me on his journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, do not trouble me. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I, I cannot rise and give it to you. He says, I say to you, though, he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend. Yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. I guess as many loaves as he needs is the reference here. And so then Jesus says, so I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives, and he who seeks, finds, and, him, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. And then he says, if a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? And then note this, he says, if you then, being evil, <laughs> note that, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who? who ask him. This is the word of God. Let's pray together. Our great Father and our God in heaven, Lord, we do just bow before you. Lord, you're holy and righteous. Lord, you're worthy of praise and honor and glory. Lord, this is your word that you've given to us. And today we'll focus on this part of it and God, we want you to speak to us and reveal your tr truth. God, help us to understand that you are a father to your children, who loves your children. And God, uh, help us to pray. 
And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Dr. Helen Rosevere, a missionary to Zaire, told a story. She said, a mother at our mission died after giving birth to a premature baby. And um, she said, we tried to improvise an incubator to keep the infant alive, but uh, the hot water bottle, the only hot water bottle that they had was beyond repair. So they just said, let's just pray. And they asked the children, and they all prayed for this, uh, you know, for uh, her sister, uh, the lady that had died and given birth to the baby. She had another daughter. And, and then one of the girls responded, and she prayed, Dear God, this is what she prayed. Listen to this. Please send a hot water bottle today. Tomorrow will be too late because by then the baby will be dead. And dear Lord, please send a doll for the baby's sister so she won't feel so lonely. <laughs> well, that afternoon, a large package arrived from England. The children watched as they eagerly opened the, the package. And as they dug around through the clothing underneath, they found a hot water bottle. Immediately, the girl who prayed the prayer, she started digging deeper, saying, if God sent that, I'm sure he sent a doll. And she was right. The Heavenly Father knew in advance of that child's sincere request, and five months earlier, he led a ladies' group in a church in England to put both those articles in that box. Tell me that's a coincidence. I want you to understand something this morning. Your Heavenly Father hears and answers your prayers. He does. First John chapter 5 Verses 14 and 15 say this. It says, now, this is the confidence, see that, that we have before him. You can have confidence in him because he hears and answers our prayers. Whenever we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we've asked him for. <laughs> now that story I just shared you, it just verifies that all to pieces, don't it? I want you to understand this this morning. And this is specific. This, this is the point of the message today. If you don't remember anything else, remember this. God hears and answers the prayers of his children. That's always true. It's always true. And I, but I'm convinced, you know, still a lot of folks don't pray. And they don't pray enough. And they don't pray the way we ought to, you know, we do that. And people stop praying a lot of times because, you know, and I've heard people say this, I just felt like my prayers wasn't getting through the ceiling, you know. And so I, I just give up. And, um, but that's not true if you're a child of God. God hears and answers your prayers. When you're his, he always hears your requests. And, and in our text, we, we see Jesus wants his followers to believe that God is always ready to hear us and to meet our need when we cry out to him with our requests. This is what Jesus is trying to communicate to his disciples here. They said, teach me to pray. And Jesus showed them how to pray. And the first thing he told them to say was what? Our Father. And now he gives them this long illustration about God as Father. And he says, our Father hears our prayers. And he gives us what we need, doesn't he? And um, so today, I, in that truth, and to help you learn to pray confidently, I want to share you with you three ways that, that we can pray confidently, Okay. Three ways you can pray confidently, and I think we see these in the text. There's probably more, but I'm, I'm pointing out three ways 
that you can pray confidently because you're a child of God and you can pray to your Father in heaven. The first one is this. You can pray confidently by when you ask shamelessly. <laughs> you ever notice how like kids a lot of times, and, and even some adults, they, they'll ask you anything. I mean, have you ever had an experience like that where somebody just comes up to you and they're, I can't believe they asked me that. You know, and, and you know, it's just like, uh, you know, my mama used to say, you know, I can't believe they had the gall to do that. You know, I, I don't know for sure if that's right or not. Gall, I don't know. But um, it sounds right. I mean, some people just got gall. And when you go before God, you can have some gall. Because you're his child. If you're his child, you can. And, and Jesus shares this illustration or this parable uh, to start with. And <laughs> any person living in the Middle East with this parable, beginning in verse 5, would understand it clearly. To us, it makes some sense, but, but I, hopefully I'll reveal some more things that help you understand more truth behind this. But, but um, in this story, I'm going to kind of summarize. This man has a friend who arrives at his home at midnight, but he doesn't have any bread left over from that day. They've eaten it all, and, and so he doesn't have anything to give him. And, and so he, ultimately he goes to a neighbor, which he calls his friend, and he asks him to borrow three loaves of bread. Now, it's not like loaves like we get at, at, at um, you know, at, at uh, Kroger or Ingalls or whatever. It's not, you know, sliced bread. It's, it's actually baked loaves, little pita loaves, you know, probably most likely. Um, little cakes of bread. Not, probably not really big, but I don't know. But anyway, and he wants to borrow three loaves to take back for the traveler who's arrived so late. And it really wouldn't have been an unusual event during that time and in that place. Uh, I mean, after all, uh, there's no motel hit six, right? Holiday Inn Express was closed. I mean, you know, they, they just don't have that. And, you know, during this time, lots of people traveled at night in this part of the world because of the heat. It's, it's really hot during the day. And so they would travel at night and, and, you know, wait till it's dark or maybe right after the sun goes down, they would travel through half of the night and try to make it to a destination where they could get some rest and, you know, in the next day, gear up to travel some more. And so it was really very normal for a visitor to, uh, or somewhat quite normal, for a visitor to show up at your house after dark, even after you'd gone to bed, even strangers would do this. And maybe knock on your door and ask for a little respite, you know, in, in your place. And, um, and a little food. And the Jews and, and many Middle Eastern cultures at this time, and, and still to this day, they hold hospitality in high regard. Now, we think we do a good job of it here in the South, but, but, but I mean, for them, not to invite someone into their home and to feed them would have given them a bad reputation. You know, it, it just would have ruined them if, if they're refusing to help someone who has a need like that in terms of hospitality. So this is the culture they're living in. And so the guy didn't want his reputation to be ruined by not being able to host his friend and to feed him properly when he dropped by his place around midnight. And so there wasn't a 24-hour Walgreens or, you know, an all-night fueling station that had an extra loaf of bread on the shelf. Those things hadn't come up yet. So his best option was to go to his friend who obviously lived close by. and Maybe he had a reputation for making more bread than he needed during the day and most likely had some left over. Or maybe he's not eating like he should. I don't know. But, but uh, he, he goes, and, and you see, during that culture... Like, like we said, they really, un, they really understood the part of the prayer that we looked at last week. Lord, give us this day our daily bread, because you know they would keep a little oil and 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 uh, olive oil or some kind of oil, and they would keep some wheat and flour and and and, and meal and things like that. And uh, every day they would make the bread for the day, and usually by the end of the day, the bread was gone. Sometimes, excuse me, sometimes they would hold a little over for the night and in the morning. And then the next day they would start all over again. 
And that's the way they lived. And, and, um, but he had nothing to give his traveling friend. So he goes to his neighbor's house. And I, I don't know if he, it, it's, it looks like he, he, he just starts calling out to him, maybe through a window. And he says, hey, buddy, I got a problem. I need three loaves of bread. And at that point, you know, probably the first call, his friend's laying in there asleep, and he's just like, he's rubbing his ears, and did I just hear something? And he's laying down, and, and his whole family's asleep. He says, you know, they're all asleep, and, and um, he, 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 he just responds. He said, why are you bothering me? I, I, the door's shut, and my children are in bed with me. Now, don't overthink this. Uh, you know, the, their houses are pretty much one room. And they would put these mats up against the walls and things during the daytime, and the doors would be open. But at night, they would build a little fire, probably in the, in the room somewhere, and they would pull the mats down, and everyone in the household would sleep in that room uh, around the fire. And on cold nights, I'm sure they all cuddled up and, and things like that. But, and, and the door, they would shut it, and it's not like our doors. Like they, it was kind of... A lot of times they would put these metal bars or wooden bars down and it'd make a good bit of racket because they really wanted to shut them in good. And they would even bring some of their livestock in with them, you know, to keep them warm and safe. And, and uh, so to get up and open a door would create a lot of noise. It would rouse the children, you know, probably rouse the livestock and, and all kinds of stuff. So, so he says, I can't, I can't get up and get it for you. And in verse 8 then, Jesus gives a little bit of an explanation. He says, I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he's his friend. But because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as, as many loaves as he needs. <laughs> okay. This word persistence in the New King James is an interesting word in the Greek. and In the King James Version, it's translated importunity. Anybody want to give that definition? Importunity? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know it either. But uh, anyway, it, it's related to opportunity, and I'll let you guys do your own little research. But, but in, in the Greek, it, the, it's the, the word is really the idea of shameless boldness. That's the idea of it. It's, it's, um, it's probably best translated shameless. Like, it, yeah, because of his shamelessness, he will rise and give him. That, that's the way I probably would, would translate it. So, so you see the idea of having confidence to pray for your Heavenly Father uh, by asking shamelessly. We see that here in this. It, it's asking with reckless disregard for another person's convenience. You know, <laughs> that's what it is. It's really, really what it means. And I, I was trying to think, you know, where do we see this? And, and I, I thought about a video that I saw online a few days ago, maybe a week or so ago, where I, a lady had come to a door, and uh, she was, it was a video of her in maybe a ring doorbell camera, and uh, she rang the doorbell, and uh, the guy wasn't home, and he responded to her, and she said, hey, she said, I, I live next door, and uh, she says, I need your Wi-Fi password, and um, she says, I, I, get, I get your signal great and, and all this, and, and, and I used to use it all the time, but, but you've changed your Wi-Fi password, and now I can't access it anymore. <laughs> okay, yeah, so y'all can already see this is pretty shameless. But anyway, and, and, and so they have this conversation that goes on for, you know, a minute or so, and, then, and he says, well, why do you think I should give you the password to my Wi-Fi since I'm the one paying for it? And she said, well, like she couldn't understand. She said, well, you know, I can get it easily. It, I get all the bars, and there's no reason for us both to pay for internet. <laughs> so I, that's a pretty shameless ask, I think. Um, the writer of Hebrews shared something like this. He said, for, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness." but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. And look what he says then. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help 
in time of need. You see, the idea of coming boldly to the throne of grace is the idea of praying shamelessly. I hope you understand there's nothing that you can't take to God. You know, and, and, and a lot of times, you know, people think, oh, he, you know, he's busy running the universe. He ain't got time to listen to my petty problems. I want to tell you something. He's a loving father who wants you to approach him with whatever it is that you feel like you need. I, it it break my heart if I knew my children needed something that I could give them. And they didn't ask. How much more do you think God wants to give to those, to his children? You know, he, he, even though he is running the entire universe, the Bible says the whole universe is upheld by the power of his word. He's still got time for you. And he wants you. He loves you, and he wants you to be willing to approach him and to know and feel like you can ask him for anything and ask him anything. Our Heavenly Father is approachable, and you can ask shamelessly, shamelessly. Another way you can pray confidently is this. Not only ask shame, shamelessly, I keep wanting to say shamefully, but that's not exactly right. So if I say that, just ignore it or correct it <sighs> ask repeatedly yeah it sounds like the same thing as persistence I guess and I guess it sort of is but, but we see this in, in these next two verses in verses 9 and 10 Jesus sort of applies this parable of this story here and he shared by, by he, he tells the disciples he says ask right and then he says seek and then he says, knock. There's sort of a progression here, I think. And, and, and he, there's this promise that if you do this, then you'll obtain your request. You'll, you'll, you'll get those requests answered. The, 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 there's a, the structure of the Greek verb to do these things here, ask, seek, and find, has the nuance of a continuous action. And so I think it's best translated for us to understand it this way is that we keep, a keep asking. That we ask and keep on asking. That we seek and keep on seeking. And that we knock and keep on knocking. That's the way it's written. And I think that's the way we need to understand it. And, and, and so I, I, I'm not exactly sure how... You know, prayer and answered prayer and begging God, so to speak, like this and asking repeatedly how it all works in the sense of our God is a sovereign God and he's in control of all things. And, and at, at the same time, he, you know, he's, he's asking us to ask and he'll answer, uh, but yet he's working out all things for good to those that love him and those that are his. That's his children, Romans eight twenty eight. And it does appear, though, that God wants to encourage you to keep on asking. Ask repeatedly. Don't stop asking. You know, if it's something you need, something you feel like you need, keep on asking. And somehow this continual persistence reveals, you know, our faith in a Father that loves us. And our belief... That he desires to help us and bless us. I think that's what, part of what's going on. Is for us to understand how much he loves us. And, and, and for us to, to understand how much we have confidence. That he will answer us. That's the reason I say pray confidently. So you ask shamelessly. And you ask repeatedly. <laughs> now any of us could give an illustration of this. If we've had children or grandchildren I'm sure. I shared with you guys uh, maybe a couple weeks ago, uh, I don't remember exactly how long ago, about my grandson River's obsession with lawnmowers. And, and um, he asked to ride the lawnmower ne nearly every day. And, and he probably does every day. I may just not hear him or I may, may not be around. But some days it's the very first thing he says when he sees me. I mean, first, first time he lays eyes on me, lawnmower. 
And I'm like, it's not time for the lawnmower yet, all right, first of all. And, you know, and so I, I reply similarly to the man in the story a lot of times. I'm like, we can't do the lawnmower right now. It's late. It's wet outside. I'm busy, all right? It doesn't matter. It don't matter. It doesn't matter what I say. Often as soon as I finish telling him we can't do it, I used to tell him that Nana won't let us. That's what I used to tell him. Because that's the way, that was the truth. But uh, she had to give in because uh, he asked repeatedly, all right? Because I, I had to give in, I guess. But, but uh, I, I, as soon as I reject him, he, he says, lawnmower. <laughs> and I can ignore him. And he'll come up to me, look me right in the eye and say, lawnmower. And then sometimes he does it repeatedly. He says, lawnmower, 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 lawnmower. And he's starting to put whole sentences together, so I don't know, I don't know what we're going to do now. But, but, but you know what happens is eventually I say, you know what, you want to ride a lot more? And he says, yes, and he reaches for me. <laughs> well, you know what I got to do then? We go ride the lot more. And a lot of times it don't really take long. And he's satisfied. You want to know why I give in and do it? It's because I love him deeply. And I love to see him satisfied. And I want him to know I love him. And that I want to please him. Now, that's not exactly like the neighbor in bed. <laughs> but the neighbor, he, 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 he likely loves his friend who has a need, and he really wants to meet the need, but, but he don't want to do it right then. You know, and so he tries to put him off. And the, the fact is that, that God doesn't always answer our prayers on our timetable. You know, I mean, sometimes he, he just says, not right now, you know. Maybe we think he's saying no. Or he, he, you see, God knows when our faith has su sufficiently been tried and our submission to his will is sufficiently complete so that when the time is right for him, then he'll grant our requests. You see. But you know, I know God loves me. And I know he wants to satisfy me. And he does. And he loves you. And he's going to hear your prayers. And he's going to answer your prayers. And you know, in, in prayer our faith is tested. And, and God wants us to see how much we trust him and rely on him. And he wants us to know even when we approach him at midnight. For the benefit of someone else. He hears us. And that he'll answer our request for the things that we really need. I, I believe he wants us to know that we can depend on him. So we can keep on asking. We can keep on asking. We can keep on seeking. We can keep on knocking. Until he finally provides a clear response to our need. You know, and if you, you get a sense that when you're praying that God has said no to your court request... You know, it's okay to stop asking then. But if you don't have a clear no, if you're getting a not now, or maybe later, or we'll see, which is a lot of what a lot of us parents say, <laughs> and when it's not the right time, then keep on asking. Keep on praying. Don't give up, you know. And... and, and and if we really want to, you know, if you really want to be men of God if you, and women of God, if you really want to know him and you really want to walk with him and you want to experience all those blessings that come that from him, then we must persist. We must continue repeatedly to pray every day, day after day. We must hunger and thirst for righteousness and then we'll be filled, right? 
And that don't mean we're filled once forever. That means we go on hungering and thirsting. And so that means we got to ask repeatedly. And I'll tell you, you know, I've got one request I've been praying and asking God for for 25 years. And I've got another one that I've been praying for for 23 years. And there's one I've been praying for close to 20 years. And I don't know if God will grant them, but I believe he will. And I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep on asking. I'm going to keep on asking. And I'm going to keep on seeking. And I'm going to keep on knocking. Pray repeatedly. Ask repeatedly. So ask shamelessly. And ask repeatedly. That's praying confidently. And one more way we can pray confidently is I want you to see in the last couple of verses we're going to look at here. The last three verses. It's ask expectantly. Um, he get, gives, he kind of continues a similar illustration or building on what he's already shared, really. Um, and the, these uh, these illustrations that he shares here are, are effective because these these in verse eleven and twelve are ludicrous, really. You know, he, 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 no earthly father would be so cruel to give his hungry child something deceptive and harmful in the place of food when the child really in need of food. I mean, would they? I mean, you know, I'm a practical jokester, but if my kid's really, really hungry, I'm not going to pull that on them. You know? You know, a snake with silvery scales could be mistaken for a fish by a young child, maybe. You know, or... or um, you know, instead of bread, a stone, you can kind of see how a stone might look like a loaf of bread. And, you know, a, a scorpion kind of coiled up may look like a little egg. And, um, but uh, these things can be harmful. A, a serpent, I'm, I'm under the idea that it's a, a venomous. And a scorpion, you know, can cause harm and maybe even death. And so Jesus, you know, is arguing from lesser to the greater in these words in verse 13. He says, if you then be an evil. Notice he, he's talking about earthly fathers who treat their children well. He says, if you being evil. <laughs> and that's who we are without Jesus, isn't it? He says, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, then how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And so this is, this is a little different. And, and if you read this account and you go back to Matthew's account, there are some differences, and, and don't, let that, don't let that bother you. Um, in Matthew's account, he, he says, um, your Heavenly Father knows how to give good gifts to those who ask him. And, it, you know, I think it's possible, and I think there may be even biblical evidence that Jesus taught them how to pray more than once. And that's where he is, and there's a little bit of variation in the two prayers and and the things that follow a little bit. And um, maybe, and it could be the, the same account, but uh, two different uh, listeners recorded part of what he said, and some of it differs a little. But anyway, um, but here he says the Holy Spirit. He'll give the Holy Spirit. And I think that's significant. The Holy Spirit is a good, good gift, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, he's going to give us good gifts, but, you know, he's the best, isn't he? And I want you to see it this way. You know, God God may not give us everything we ask for. And I, I believe that may be why he says our Heavenly Father will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. It's because when we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive God himself. And the Holy Spirit is 100% God. And the Father is with us in Him. And when you believe in faith, the Holy Spirit of God indwells you and empowers you permanently as a child of God. And so the Father is with us in Him, in the Holy Spirit in us. And when that's true, you know, we have everything we need, don't we? If you've got Jesus... You've got God in you. 
You don't need anything else. And that's the truth. You know, and, and the, the Father is, you know, and, and we may not need everything we ask for. Is that true? <laughs> we ask for a lot of things we don't really need. Right? I believe if we really need it, God always answers and gives. But, but um, we definitely need our Heavenly Father. No, that's one thing we do need. We do need him. We do need God. And, and when we receive the Holy Spirit, we have the abiding presence of God in us. And we have the awesome power of God in us. And we have the Holy Spirit. He's called a counselor. So if you need some counseling, you've got the, count, the spiritual counseling of God in you. We've got a holy guide. He's a comforter, he's a guide, and we have all the good gifts of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22. The Bible says that, you know, for those of us who are in the Spirit, we bear the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Right? <laughs> so God only gives good and perfect gifts to his children. So when you pray, you can ask expectantly. Because God's going to answer and he's going to give you the best gift you can ever receive. And that's himself. You know, for, for a while now, several weeks back, I noticed that McDonald's started offering for their drinks uh, what's known as what, an Arnold Palmer. And that sounds like a mixed drink, I know. And, and maybe it is, I don't know. But, but for me, and what I know it as is a half lemonade and half iced tea. Sweet tea, usually. And, and so, and I noticed, you know, I, I try to do the no sugar. They have a half unsweet tea and half diet lemonade. And so I started ordering that, and I, I really enjoy it. And, and so I frequently ordered it, and I, I get orders through their app a lot. And, well, the first few, few times I went through the drive through and I got it, and I was like, that's pretty good. And, and um, but, you know, the, the, the last three or four times, in a row, I've got to the window, and um, they told me they were out of lemonade, so they couldn't give it to me. You know, and the first time was bad, the second time was worse, the third time was a little aggravating. And then, you know, I, the last time I was there, it's happened so much, and the same lady's at the window nearly every time, that when I pulled up to the window, she said, oh, it's you again, we're out of lemonade again. And I was like, oh my goodness. I said, uh, 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 whatever. Y'all don't ever fill it up after you run out the first time during the day, I guess. <laughs> oh, goodness. But um, so now I've been conditioned, right? Instead of expecting to receive what I ordered, I have more of an expectation not to receive what I ordered. <laughs> you know, but it's not like that with our Heavenly Father. He's a good, good Father. He is. And um, although we may not always get what we ask for, we can only expect good, good gifts from him. You know, and, and a lot of places you go to a restaurant and you don't get what you ask for, they give you something extra. And that's the way our God is. You know, he may not give you what you need or what you ask for, I mean, but he'll give you something better. Right? He'll give you something better. So, so listen, Pray. Let us pray. You know, I just encourage you, pray confidently because God is good. And if you're one of his, you're his child. He loves you and he wants to bless you with good gifts. And he wants to bless you with eternal gifts. And he hears and answers the prayers of his children. So notice the message is that God hears and answers the prayers of his children. You catch that? But everyone's not his child. Who are the children of God? John chapter 1 tells us that. Tells us this. Right after it says that. He, he came unto his own. And his own didn't receive him. But he says this in verse 12. But as many as received him. Talking about Jesus. He gave the right to become children of God. To who? To those who believe in his name. 
And then look at this. Who are, not, who are born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but born of God. You see, that's how you become a child of God. You must receive Jesus and be born of God to be a child of God. So there's got to be a rebirth. There must be faith in Jesus as the Son of God. And, and where there is faith, you receive Christ and you're reborn as a child of God. And if you're not, listen to me, if you're not a child of God, the prayer you must pray. The prayer you must pray for God to hear you and answer you is a prayer of faith calling out to him for salvation. He may not hear anything else. He'll hear, but he, he, if you're not one of his, you know, you know, all the neighbor's kids can beg me to get them whatever they want. I'm probably not going to get most of it. Depending on what it is. But when my kids need something, I'm going to give it to them. If I can. And that's the way God is. If you're not a child of God, the prayer you've got to pray is a prayer of faith. Calling out to God for salvation. You do that by admitting to God that you're a sinner. God, I, I realize I'm a sinner. And that, I, I know that sin is separated from me from you. And maybe that's why you're not hearing my prayers. Maybe that's why I'm not getting my prayers answered. Because I'm not one of yours. And, and, but I believe today that Jesus died for my sins. And that he rose again. And, and if you, you believe that, you can call out to him for salvation. And, the, and if you do that, the Bible says... Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And when you do that, you're born again. And then you'll be his. You'll be his child forever. And then your heavenly father will hear your prayers. And he will answer them. So let us pray confidently. Pray confidently. If you're his. And this morning, if you don't know the Lord, you can confidently know that if you call out to him to save you, he will hear you and he will answer you and he will save you. Let's pray together. Let's respond in faith this morning. Father, we do bow before you right now. And God, we're thankful for this word of truth. God, we're thankful for the reminder that we need to pray, Lord, and that you hear us and that you answer. Lord, and that you're a loving Father, a generous Father who wants to meet our needs and help us to be satisfied in you. And so right now, God, we pray that you'd save lost souls, change hearts and lives, and Lord, help us to pray. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand together. If you have a need this morning.